Hello, welcome to this very special edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace, reporting live here at Joe's Pub here in New York City. Two-time Grammy-nominated jazz vocalist and now writer, Jasmine Horn tonight is performing new music from her brand new record, Dear Love, with her new band, Her Noble Force, which is a dynamic 15-piece big band. Now this recording really took shape during the COVID-19 pandemic. In fact, during this time, in addition to putting this music together out of her own pocket, she also wrote a book which is titled Strive From Within, The Jasmine Horn Approach. Now, tonight you're gonna to hear new music from this album, as well as my interview with her, talking about the brand new record, how she was able during this COVID-19 pandemic to really recharge her energy, as well as her creative force, as well as talk about the big band, and also why the record labels refused to touch this big brand project. So sit back, relax, and enjoy highlights of the official New York record release performance of Jasmine Horn and her noble force presenting new music from her album Dear Love here on the Pace Report, live at Joe's Pub here in New York City. Don't care what he does, cause he's my guy. 
congratulations. This album and this band is going back to the 40s, 50s, and 60s with the big band. And there's also some social commentary. And there's also a lot of growth on this album. COVID must have really put you in a situation where you had a lot of time to think about your art. COVID put me in a situation where I had a lot of time to think about my art. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. What about motherhood too? Did that help the art also? I think so. I mean, being a mother really helps me to do everything better. Because with motherhood, you don't have a choice. You don't have a night off and you don't get to you know, you're always, you're always going to, once you're a mother, father, you're always going to be a mother, a father, or a mother, or a father, you know? So, there is no going back from that, you know? And it's really helps me to be able to develop into the person that I am today, which I'm really grateful because not everybody can have children. Um, and then some people say to me, well, why didn't you wait until later in your life, you know? And then I see some of my friends who are much older than me and they're not happy. Um, because they didn't have children. So I wouldn't trade my little girls for the world. And everything that I have learned from them and that I'm continuing to learn from them um, has made me a better person. Not just a, a, a better mother, but a better person. And not just a better musician, but a better person, a better human being. Um, and then that has helped me to develop my artistry better. So spending time with them, and teaches me how to spend time with my music. Talking to them and learning how to communicate with them helps me understand how to better communicate and talk to people. So they're learning. And everybody doesn't know what you know based on what your experiences are. So you kind of have to share, you know, and speak to people in a way that's very human. <laughs> We're humans, you know. Did you shed a lot during these last 18 months? Did you? Did you mentally, spiritually, did, how did you sink all of this to where we are right now tonight? How did all of this come together? If I had to draw a picture to describe it, I would, um, I would draw like buildings and cities in a circular motion and then a woman and in the center of all of that commotion, like the eye of a, the hurricane. So there's a hurricane going around and stuff is flying everywhere. Music's flying, cars are flying, everything is flying. People are dying, it's, you know, everything's happening. And then there's me right in that center, just grounding myself and pulling into my reality all the things that I need and want and desire and cultivating those things and just sticking with them, just ground, really grounding myself. It took a lot for me to just pull and hold and just press my roots deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper down into the universe. That's what I would, that was, that's what I did. You know, that's how I can describe what I, what I did. Musically, mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, in every way imaginable. I did just that, just really grounded myself and found out a lot more about me, a lot more about my journey, what my hopes are for my journey. I have a lot more goals than I've ever had in my life. Um, spending time and really treasuring my family and my children and understanding what I really want for my career, but also just allowing the creator to do what the creator does too. So, yeah. What? Uh, 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 uh. Sky was blue, high above, the moon was new and so was love. This aching heart of mine is hanging, lover, where can you Ooh, be? Love came at last, had to stay, that day is fast. You gone away, this aching heart of mine is hanging, love, come on home to me.
one of the things that I um just going back 18 months one of the things that we do in black American black American music and also the literary thing there's always a great breath of commentary when we go through struggles and we saw three layers of this we saw financial we saw political and we also saw a health pandemic and I noticed that during these last 18 months there wasn't a lot of social music that came out to reflect on the times and on this album and also you put out a couple of songs during the pandemic that were pretty heavy and made people are getting ready to make people think about where we need to move forward was that something that you really wanted to do with this recording some of your songs I'm not gonna stop being me <laughs> you know and I started to show that who I am with a social call you know there was a lot of political stuff there because politics is my reality there are people on the planet who don't want to deal with politics because they don't live politics they don't have to wake up and be seen a specific kind of way where people you walk around and people have preconceived notions about who you are because of their experiences so certain people don't have to deal with that I do so I'm gonna sing about it I'm gonna talk about it I'm going to live through it and I'm going to strive to be free through it. And so this is where it came from. You know, strive is a mantra. It's like, like I'm saying, this was really my mantra. All this bull crap is going on around me and in my mind and in my visions and in my body and in my spirit, I am striving to be free. Just like you said, we saw a financial part. Strive to be free, mm -hmm. right? We mm -hmm. saw a financial, <laughs> strive to. Let me focus on what I need to do right now. Because what is currency? Then this is why, why you have money can't buy me, love, right? And that's why you have that poem, Faces. And this is why you have that song, money can't buy me, love. If you look at the track on the actual record, it doesn't say money can't buy me love. It says money can't buy me, comma, love. So I'm talking to my love, dear love. Love, money can't buy me. It can't, it won't ever be able to. Strive to be free. <laughs> right? It's like, let me just wake up real quick to tell you something. Okay, let me go back under. That was it. It's like, I was under a rock. Happy to be. I needed that time to just sit there and do all of these things and really focus my energy in a positive way. And listen to my creator, listen to my maker. Right. You know?
that I like the morning dew. Sullivan Fortner was your music director. Yeah. You know, he's grown tremendously in the last decade as well. And you guys go back a long time when you were in school. What, what is it about Sullivan that he keeps evolving? What are you seeing, you know, because he's a great accompanist, but he's also a great pianist as well. What is it that you've noticed over the last decade that you've seen as far as his growth? Well, he came out of Roy Hargrove's big band. And he's also an eclectic musician and he has a sensibility to the church, which is where I grew up. But he also has a sensibility to jazz and funk and hip hop and R&B and soul and all of it. He's very eclectic. So the reason why I chose him to be my musical director is because number one, he can take um, he can take rules, you know, or, or take authority from a woman. I wasn't going to have to be like, no, this is how it goes. No, man, don't play. Don't no. This is not, you know, I wasn't have to do that with him. If I can just say, I want them to do this, and this is what I like to do, and this is what I wrote, but this is how it sounds, and this is blah, blah, blah. And he would just say, oh, just put a B flat over there and do this. All right, y'all play. And that's exactly what he did. He didn't take over and change anything. He just really molded things together and directed things, and that was it. He didn't change not one single thing, you know? And I knew that that was going to be the relationship that I needed to have with someone who I gave that title, musical director, because that's a, that's... Which way are you directing? You know what I mean? So, um, I knew with his personality, his spirit, his drive, who he is as an individual, his upbringing, the respect that he has for his mother and his sisters that I've seen personally, I knew I wasn't having any issues. Her Noble Force, this band, and I know a lot of your musicians in this band, and um, you're really taking it back. Like I said earlier, this, this big band is something that we need to kind of go back to the roots and the crux of black American music. And the big bands was something that in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, vocalists came out of that era. and. You're going back to it, but you're bringing a soulful as well as a swing side of this. How did you do this? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I, I, this is what was in my heart and soul. That's it. I don't. I have no like intellectual. I, I, that's not. I don't have anything to say other than this is my soul. Like this is what was in my mind. If I had all the voices to sing all those parts, in fact, I did actually. The way that this album came about is that I, I, I'm not good at writing music in terms of writing for this many people, right? Trio stuff, I handle all the time. The tenor saxophone and the trumpet sonically are a ninth the part. So I'm used to writing for them. Piano, bass, drums, rhythm section charts. I'm used to doing that. But when it comes to all of these other music, alto, saxophone, um, violin, viola, I, I 
don't have that kind of experience? Well, I do now. <laughs> <laughs> I do now. But I didn't have that experience, you know. That was not something that I learned at the university. Um, or, or something that I taught myself either. So I just sang what I heard in my, in my head, you know, into GarageBand. And then I went and looked, okay, what is... Um, the range for this instrument. What is the range for that instrument? Alright, cool. So I'm going to change instead of the what I sang as soprano, I'm going to change it to be alto or I'm going to change it to be baritone and I'm going to flip it. And, and that was that's how I wrote the album. So that's why it doesn't sound traditional. Right. You know, it's more like Sun Ra meets um, meets um, Count Basie? Mingus, Charles Mingus. Mingus. I mean, you think about the musicians, the number of musicians that are in my band, it's almost like Mingus. So, I, I just did what, I just did the best that I could with what I know how to do. And um, I didn't want to wait, I didn't want anybody to tell me, oh, well, you're only 30. So, you know, it's not time for you to sing with a big band, it's not time to record with a big band. Because what, initially what happened, I went to Concord and I said, hey, I have one more album with you guys, you know, this is my, my term is getting ready to be up, and I want to do another staple album. Social Call got a Grammy nomination, Love and Liberation got a Grammy nomination, and an NAACP award, and NPR, and Downbeat, and Jazz Times, and Jazz Is, and I mean, it, it elevated me in, in such a beautiful way. Let's keep the momentum going. And they said, honestly, it's, you know, we're not trying to be disrespectful, but we just don't have the budget, you know? And I, I went to so many other record companies and they said, big band, forget it. We don't have the budget. We just don't have the budget. So I figured I saw all of these different mathematicians and all these other people on TED Talk talking about what they do in their lives and how if you have something someone else needs, they'll pay you for it. That's right. So I wrote a book about what I know how to do and I sold it and I sold a heck of a lot of books and people said can I study with you I want to I want to learn deeper about what you're teaching in this book and I said well I can't teach all 200 of you so I started my own online school and they came and they kept 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 coming and more and more kept coming um, and I started my own record company you know and I said well this music has already been written it's already in my soul it's already it's it, it lives because I've already written it down I've already thought about it I've already sang it I've already written it down what else is there to manifest it's here it exists now it's living and breathing so the next thing to do is just to record it and that's the reason we're sitting here talking today <laughs> Like I said, these last 18 months have been just fruitful for everybody. And I said this when we were going into the pandemic. I said there are going to be a lot of people that are going to do so much better when they get out of this. And there are going to be so many people that are going to do so much worse coming out of this. Mm -hmm. And I think that everybody had time to sit down. And, and even for me, it was time for me to recharge, to think about doing me, not always music and writing and it was it was a personal time for me and I, I one of the things I've noticed in this album this is the music so much stronger this is such it's like a continuation a better continuation of the first two records you've done and I think uh, the world is getting ready to be very shocked when they see and hear this music are you ready for that I, I it's not if it's not whether I'm ready or not it's already been done you know but my main thing is that I want the people to be able to understand what sovereignty is. You know what I mean? It's not about whether I'm ready or not. I mean, it's going to happen, you know. Um, I think that sovereignty is going to be really good for us right now. Especially having seen what we can do and what we're capable of doing for ourselves throughout the pandemic. You know, if someone snatches the rug up under you, what do you do? Strive to be free. <laughs> free. You know? Right. That's it. You know? And that's real. That's that's like food that you can take that to the bank. You know, that's not like, oh well, let me just give you nah man. Be sovereign. On the business side, are you gonna continue to do your own projects instead of dealing with the, the majors because just recently, uh Anita Baker, she got her emancipation, she got her masters. They don't have the money anymore. 
They don't have the money. Every single record company I went to said, we don't have the money. Sarah Vaughn is not sponsored anymore. Monk is not sponsored anymore. They don't have the money. Strive to be free. For real. Yeah. Sovereignty. That's your answer. <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Right. They don't have the money. What's next? Well, I'm going to keep building on this school, keep ministering and teaching these young women and keep sharing. That's it. Keep playing music. I'm going to do another recording. I don't know if it's going to be on my label or someone else's label, but I'm going to just keep moving, keep progressing. That'll do it again for this very special edition of the Base Report, reporting live here at Joe's Pub here in New York City for the official New York record release performance of Jasmine Horn's brand new album, Dear Love. I'd like to personally congratulate and thank Jasmine Horn for her time. Make sure you support her brand new CD as well as her book, Strive From Within, The Jasmine Horn Approach, which is now available on her website, artistryofjazzhorn.com, as well as amazon.com. Also, I'd like to personally thank the staff and management here at Joe's Pub for their warm hospitality. I can't stress this more than enough, people. Please like, share, and subscribe, and leave comments on my videos here on the YouTube as well as Vimeo. And also visit my website, thepacereport.com, for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Till next time, remember if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Till next time, peace. Come on home to me I remember every tooth